All right, so in this video, we're going to look, take a look at deriving an equation between the time period and length of a conical pendulum. So with a conical pendulum, what you have it doing is going round in horizontal circular motion, but you do it by having a bob on a, like a bob on a string like this. And so like this is like the center of your circle. This is the radius of your circle. This is the like length of your bob. And let's call this angle in here theta, like this. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the conditions of equilibrium. So if this is your bob, you know it's got a force of mg acting downwards on it, like this. And we know it's if it's going in a horizontal circle, the, the vertical component of the force acting from the string must be equal to that. So what we know is that F sine theta is equal to mg, like this. So we know that the force acting on the string is going to be mg over sine theta, like this. So we've got an equation of acting on this system. But what we also know is if it's going in circular motion, that the horizontal component or f cosine theta must be to the centripetal force because it's going in a circle. So we've got like this, which we often see because we're trying to get a relationship between length and time period, we're going to put that straight in like this. Okay, so we've now got essentially two uh, equations which we can actually use to come up with an equation linking uh, length and time period. We'll need to substitute length in in a second. So let's uh, substitute this, I'm going to call this equation 1, into this one, equation 2. So what we get if we do that is we get m g over sine theta times cosine of theta is equal to m 4 pi squared r all over t squared. And if we look at our diagram here, so we know we've got what the um, adjacent side is, we've got the hypotenuse, so by applying some Pythagoras, we can work out what the length of the opposite side is too. So, moving on from this. So, first of all, let's simplify our expression. So we know that mg over tan theta is going to be uh, m 4 pi squared root r over t squared. So we can see here we can cancel out the m's. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in for tan theta. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be the opposite divided by the adjacent like here. Root. Let's give ourselves lots of space. So we're going to have g over the opposite and then dividing the bottom line by something is the same as multiplying the top line, so that's why the r has gone up there. So we get this expression, so we can see our r's end up cancelling out. And let's rearrange to make t squared the subject. And we, oh, oh. So we end up with this 
equation right here to essentially link the length and the time period of a pendulum system. So this um, equation is not in, fairly straightforward at this point, um, but let's uh, dig into it in a little bit more detail. So if our length is considerably greater than our radius, what we can then say is that the r squared term is essentially negligible. So what we get is t squared 4 pi squared over g square root of l squared. Like this. And then so obviously what that becomes, we can square root um, square root everything root pi l over g. So when we have a very long conical pendulum where the length is much greater than radius, what we can see happens is that it just becomes like a pendulum. So we can just model it as a pendulum system. But we can see where that's not the case. Actually, in a conical pendulum, you're going to end up with time periods shorter than are predicted by the pendulum equation because this r squared term becomes important and will end up lowering the time period of your system. So essentially what we can see here, looking at this from a circular motion perspective, a conical pendulum um, behaves differently at different lengths. So there's not just one hard and fast like relationship here. Sometimes it can be a pendulum, sometimes it's not, depending on what the length is.